Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Buddha Le Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sate Namine Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Buddha Le Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Sate Namine Namaste Parasvati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvyasecha Sunyavari Pakacharajatarine Namaste Parasvati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvyasecha Sunyavari Jaya Sri Krishna Deitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adreta Gadha Vivasari Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya Prabhupada, Jaya. Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada 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 Padmanabhavagatari-asotasatasusujimad-divine-grace-esi-bhakti-vedanta-kamnasila-prabhupada-gita-ayam-vishnu-padmanabhavagatari-asotasatasusujimad-divine-grace-sila-bhakti-sad
Ladies. Umir, Mother Earth, Gripta, Puffed Up, Nirpa Via, Posing Kings of the Supreme Power personified in the stat, Daicha of Demons, Anka of Military Phoenix Phalanx of Soldiers, Sada Uyatiha, Unlimited, of many thousands, hundreds of thousands. Karanta, being overburdened. Buri Barena, by the burden of unnecessary fighting power. Brahmanam, and to Lord Brahma. Saranam, to take shelter. Yeah, you went. Translation purport by the divine, divine grace. Your prophet, Once when Mother Earth was overburdened by hundreds of thousands of military phalanx of various conceit, conceited demons dressed like king, she approached Lord Brahma for relief. Please repeat. Once Mother Earth was overburdened by hundreds of thousands of military, phalanxes, of various conceited demons, dressed like kings. She approached Mother Lord Brahma for relief. Report. When the world is overburdened by unnecessary military arrangements, when various demoniac kings are executive heads of state, this burden causes the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 4 7, Yada e Dharmasya, Gadir Bhakti Bharataha, Banunas Tema Ramasya, Adatinam Sanyadaham. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice of the sons of Bharata and predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I appear myself. When the residents of the earth become atheistic and godless, they descend to the status of animals like dogs and hogs, and thus their only business is to bark among themselves. This is Dharma Galini, deviation from the goal of life. Human life is meant for attaining the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness. And when people are goddess and the presidents or kings are unnecessarily puffed up with military power, the business is to fight and increase the military strength of the different states. Nowadays, therefore, it appears that in every state is busy manuf manufacturing atomic weapons to prepare for a third world war. Such preparations are certainly unnecessary. They reflect the false pride of the heads of state. The real business of the chief executive is to see to the happiness, happiness and of the mass of people by training them in Krishna consciousness in different divisions of life. Chattva Varnya Maya Gyatam Guna Karma Radhyagaha. A leader should train the people as Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishas, Sudras, and engage them in various occupational state duties, thus helping them progress towards Krishna consciousness. Krishna. Instead, however, the rogues and thieves in the guise of protectors arrange for a voting system and in the name of democracy. They come to power by hook or crook and exploit the citizens. Even long, long ago, Asuras, persons devoid of God, God consciousness, became the heads of state. And now this is happening again. The various states of the world are preoccupied with arranging for military strength. Sometimes they spend 65% of the government's revenue for this purpose. But why should people hard earned money be spent in this way? Because of the present world situation, Krishna has descended in the form of Krishna consciousness movement 
This is quite Mr. Nefer. Without the Krishna consciousness movement, this world cannot be peaceful and happy. By the grace of Srila Prabhupada, teach I. So, Prabhupada was famous by making a comment about the United Nations. It's an assembly in New York. Everybody knows New York. Uh, but he called them a society of barking dogs. And so today's society repeats all this burden that the Mother Earth is having to bear. So Mother Earth today is also bearing this heavy phalanx of powerful demons. It happened that you might, in, in America they had they were testing atomic bombs 330 times. The American government tested nuclear power, and Russia did the same. So then in Kennedy administration, he stopped the whole thing by doing a test ban treaty and stopped the whole thing. So in America, in all countries in America, in, uh, in the world, same, same factors going on by the barking dogs and you cross a border, you got to have problems. You got papers to be, nobody goes from one country to another without a passport. And so the same old story that continues in, like Prabhupada said, the whole thing is now mitigated by the Krishna consciousness movement. Krishna has descended in the form of Srila Prabhupada's movement. And because of that, there is some change in society. Now, I don't know how many temples there are across the world, but Prabhupada initiated the whole structure and begins now take over the world. And the government was fearful in the beginning in America. They were approaching Congress and, and talking about the Hare Krishna movement. If it continues to grow like an epidemic, it'll take over the, the government. And probably, yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> it could be really improved if they did take over. And so there, there's approaches to the idea of taking over world power by devotees. And Prabhupada said it would happen. In eventual, eventuality, the time would come when governments would be run by devotees. Supreme Court would have Tilak and uh, Kantimala, and there would be like a, a whole change in consciousness within the world. So we're praying for that, and we're doing that as the best we can through the movement. Our devotees are all over the world, and temples all over the world after festivals, prashad distribution, and massive quantities of prashad being given out to, to everybody. So we're doing our part, but uh, it's never enough. The world is just beginning to wake up for the fact that if you go from one point to another in life, it's wasted. Otherwise, you don't know what the whole purpose of life is all about. And if we don't train people to become Krishna conscious, ultimately, it's futile. People, they're born, they have byproducts, and then they die. And they repeat it again, over and over again. I was recently in America, and my family are all meat eaters, and they give respect to me because, you know, I try to give by example, but there's no change. Once it inhabited a certain mentality, ultimately it doesn't change. So ultimately meat eaters are hard to convince. It's hard to bring it down. And when you tell the story that the reaction that takes place by eating meat, animal killers, Prabhupada talks about as being the, the worst kind of human being. They have no process of how to understand Krishna consciousness. If you're a meat eater, a killer of animals, ultimately everybody's affected. It's like it starts in the butcher shop. No, it starts in the stockyards. Chicago's famous for that. Ultimately, the animals are taken to slaughter. And they know about it. They know what's happening. They're afraid. Sometimes they escape and they get out of there. But then they're slaughtered and the people doing the killing have to suffer amazing. But it continues all the way down the line. Anybody who eats meat is guilty of the whole process, whether they do the killing or not. Even the people who serve the meat, the restaurants, any meat eating concept is just unfortunate. We're distributing books in America, my wife and I. She had a friend who was a butcher. So the butcher cleaned off her hands, but taking the blood off to take the Bhagavad Gita that she was offering. And so, and there's some hope. And then there's a famous story, I gotta tell it, it's so funny. That uh, one devotee was distributing books in a mall. 
and famous in America, these malls. And so he was being chased by the security. So he ran down the hall and ultimately came to a blank uh, one door, otherwise he would be caught. So the door was open, he walked through the door and he was suddenly on stage with thousands of people in front of him. And so the MC said, oh, you brought the gifts. So, yeah, yeah, I got them right here. Took out all the books out of his bag and he gave it to the MC and they started giving the prizes out. And he turned around to go back out and he looked and there was a big sign on, a, on the, above the wall. It says, United Butchers of the World. And so they were all butchers and they were all like ready to receive Bhagavad Gita. So in any case, uh, this first chapter is all about Lord Krishna's birth and about the questions being asked by Brikit Sukadev by, by the Namasharanya residents and, and, uh, and, uh, and these questions have to be answered. One is that why did Krishna take his birth and what was the point, what was the whole reason for it? So Mother Bhumi was approaching, as we read, Lord Brahma. You know, this billop of, of demons is causing so much headache and so much problem because I can't bear the, the weight anymore, it's too much. And so uh, Brahma went to Lord Vishnu, you can't get direct access, so he's on the shore of the milk ocean. And so the answer came, okay, uh, and only Lord Brahma heard it. He said, you will have to tell everybody to take birth in the Yadu dynasty, in the Rishni dynasty, as I am going to go on the earth planet and equalize the whole problem. The problem will be solved in a minute once I get there. And there Krishna comes, takes his birth, and ultimately, why did Kamsa want to kill the six of the eight kids? Let me read about that because it goes back. It's something I didn't know about. Kamsa Ranyakasipu had a Kala Yena as his other birth. He had six sons, the six Gandharvas, and grandfather Ranyakasipu had uh, had this. For, for, for telling the prophet the future. Uh, the six sons of Nakala Nini did the same thing as Rani Kasipu and went to Lord Brahma to, and did austerities to please him so not to die again. So they were doing these austerities and when uh, Kalmanini found out about it, he cursed them. He said, you were not following me, you're following your, your Lord, going to Lord Brahma asking for the same kind of benediction uh, got. So I curse all of you to die. Uh, you're going to take into birth in the womb of Devaki, and you'll be killed by your own father. That's Kam, that's uh, Kamsa. So that's the reason they all died. Um, but uh, Vasudev understood that it wasn't going to be these first kids that were going to be the ones to do the business of killing Kamsa. So he, they, I guess they must have understood that there's a curse that had to happen and these the six kids of Marici, the sons of Marici were the ones who were going to die. So the first baby was born, the son brought to Kamsa by Vasudev. Here's the first baby, I told you I would do it. And so he says, well, because you're honest and faithful to what you said, I won't kill the kid. So take him back, go back to your house. So he goes back, but then Nardamuni, the great antagonist, the devil's advocate, came along. You know, Nardamuni, he's not a nice guy. He, he's, a, he's a big troublemaker. So he talks to Kamsa and he says, listen, you boy, you boy, you bully, you dog. <laughs> he says, it's not the eighth child. Any one of these kids could be Vishnu, so you better take care of it. Because you want to increase Kamsa's of sinful activities. He wanted to speed up the whole process to get Krishna to come on the planet. And so he did that. So he got so up, uproarious, he killed all, this, all the six kids, all the sons of, of uh, Marishi. And so faithfully, it, it happened like that. And then, uh, then even Durga, in a previous life, has said that he would take birth in, in the planet in the womb of, of Devaki. 
So, in any case, the, the story goes on. Uh, Lord Krishna's appearance day is celebrated all over the world now. And uh, Janastami is pretty much a favorite for most Indians and most people in the world. So what's the difference between now and what happened before? The same story. The heads of government, the heads of state are all dedicated, and that same thing has been happening in America. They have a percentage of the government income is used for defensive purposes. If you try to stop it, the leaders in the military will fight it and stop you from trying to change the whole thing. That's happened a few times. Then there's a the story about Balaram being the oldest. You heard the story? That Balaram, in the previous birth, was a younger boy. And so he says, I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to be younger. You've got to listen to me, so I'm taking birth first. So Balaram was the older son. And he, he always gave advice to Krishna, but Krishna sometimes didn't listen. But Balaram covered every aspect of supporting support facility. Um, there's a difference between Mahamaya and Yogamaya. Mahamaya is a partial representation of Yogamaya. So Maya 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 Mahamaya is solely meant to disrupt the consciousness of everybody's head so that they can't become Krishna conscious. That's her sworn duty. So if you ever get problems in your devotion life, it's being, being assaulted by Mahamaya. But she's covered, uh, she covers everybody. Everybody's covered by this potency, this Maha potency. And um, the Yoga Maya facilitates the devotees and gives them inspiration and gives a chance for devotees to do more austerities and learn the path of Krishna consciousness and ultimately lead it laid a path back home, back to God, that, that's yoga maya. So yoga maya works in the, in the covering factor of maha maya, and that's the big difference between the two, and that's the question asked by, by Bridget. Um, now when Kamsa was about to kill his head, chop off the head of his daughter, his, his sister, now Devaki was born the Kamsa's uncle's family. So there's a difference between the two families that are related. But Kamsa's in one and Devaki's in another. And so had he done it, it would have caused a rivalry between the two factions and a lot of people would have died unnecessarily. That was one fact we thought about. So Vasudev being the, the old time mediator and cool-headed person, he says, don't, no, listen, don't do this, brother-in-law, because ultimately you're going to take a reaction in this life and the next life. So, so it was. And he gave all the points that he could think about not to kill the, the sister who was like just about to get, she's married and going back to, to our house and we're going to live as a couple. So not now, for heaven's sakes, ultimately the, you're, a, you're a proud person, you're a hero, you're worshipped and respected by everybody in the family. Don't do this, not now. It's, and he made different requests and ultimately he made a big, re, he got a big response. So he says, okay. He says, in fact, I'll, I'll deliver the first child and all the children born if they're sons. I'll deliver them all. Because it's not just the eighth son, but you should be given all the sons just in case. So that was Vasudev's idea. Save the day. If I can't save the day, then ultimately she would lose her head. That's the end of my spiritual and memory of life and the end of Devaki. So Kamsa is a kind of a, a, a sort of a demon who had no, um, no, no problem doing whatever he had to do in order to make itself, his own life more perfected. So Prabhupada mentions, don't follow any politicians, kings, or women. No, not devotee, of course. <laughs> and uh, so, in the, the political arena, it started back in the time when Prabhupada was still present. And we had the God and God We Trust movement started by 
by some devotees. It didn't last very long because Prabhupada you could see and he said that Srila Prabhupada's very dirty politics is so sticky, dirty. We're not sure we want to get involved in it, but okay, back out, don't don't pursue it. Because ultimately it, it gets pre-ranked anything about the voting system as Prabhupada mentioned. And the voting system is such that they can manipulate the voting and get into office. There's a difference between uh, Mahatmas and the Dur Duratmas. Um, one's covered and one's uncovered. No devotional service is possible to cover by Mahamaya. And ultimately, that's, the, that's the, the way it is in the whole material world. Everybody is covered completely. It's so hard to find anybody that's a devotee. Well, one thing that Prabhupada mentions, that if you're in Vrindavan or Mayapur, you're in the spiritual world. And if you're in either place, you're protected and you're going back home, back to God in this life. Prabhupada said that. So he did that. I was in a class in Vrindavan, no, in L.A. when Prabhupada mentioned this. He says, everybody's going back home, back to God, all of you. There's a big uproar, there's kirtan and appreciation. So we're here, we're safe, we're in the, in the shelter of the Holy Dom. Ultimately, Lord Chaitanya's mercies, very special. In, in, in Vrindavan, I was in uh, 41 years in Vrindavan, worshiping Radha Sham. And there's so much heavy austerities. Vrindavan is, is the same but different than Mayapur. Mayapur is a, a paradise. It's a cakewalk and there's nothing, uh, there's no offenses tolerated or no offenses. Uh, accepted by Lord Chaitanya. But in Vrindavan, <laughs> different story. Krishna doesn't accept the offenses. And so ultimately it's, it's a different world altogether. Why did Krishna kill Kamsa is another question. Because of all the offenses that Kamsa perpetrated. He tried to kill Krishna so many ways, sending all the, his, his friends to kill Krishna. And Krishna tolerated and killed him. Even Putin I got the benediction of being a mother because she was sucking the breast, Krishna was sucking her breast. So and because Kamsa in the beginning, it was friendly. He took the reins, and like Krishna was driving Arjuna's chariot, Kamsa was driving um, Devaki's chariot as they were going back from the wedding. And the dowry that was given was 400 elephants with golden garlands, 10,000 horses, 1,800 chariots, 200 beautiful maidservants went, went along with Devaki. So a king in those days had it made. Uh, Um, so there's just more about what Vasudev said to Kamsa, but uh, my dear brother-in-law, the secret is of how to control and pacify demons is to, and tigers and snakes to flatter them, praise them, ultimately give them position. And that's what you do when you got to confront a demon or a snake or, or a tiger. Anyway, you better be careful about tigers and snakes. But demons, everybody's a demon in the world, so it's not hard to find one. So he, he mentioned about be a reaction in this life and the next life. And uh, another question about transmigration works always and there's no problem about that in, uh, re uh, re uh, reincarnation. It's always going to happen. It's always there. And there's a question that most people ask, is there sex after death? I mean, if there's sex after death, ah, uh, no problem dying. Mark Twain's story that uh, he said, you're drinking and you're smoking, and you're going to hell. But my brother and my family, they all drink and smoke. 
or they're all going to hell. But I'll bet everybody I know drinks and smokes. Well, you're all going to hell. Well, then hell must be heaven. So I can go on drinking and smoking. I'll be in a good position. I'll be with my family. Another point, we'll clear it up. From the mind comes the different bodies. So Prabhupada described the fact that ultimately the controlling factor of everything is the mind. The mind goes with us no matter where we are. And so getting different bodies is all dictated by the mind. So whatever you're thinking at the time of death, is, as we know, is what perpetrates the whole mechanism. And ultimately, whatever we're thinking at that last moment is what you get in the next life. So these bodies are manifestation of what we had in our last life and the thought process. We're thinking, I want this body, I want to be born in America or India, wherever, wherever you're born, whatever your, your fate is. But these bodies are mechanism manifestation of previous desires. So what we desire next, of course, is what we get in the next life. So better to think of getting out of here. Well, that's another thing Prabhupada says, don't wait for our next birth to come again and be a preacher and try to make people Krishna conscious. It's like the bathroom, just do your business and get out. You don't try to come back again. Ultimately, it's no, there's no position that's worthwhile coming back and being subjected to the whole process again. Change in body processes goes on perpetually. There was Mother Bhumi who started the whole process of approaching Lord Brahma. And so she got the relief when Krishna assembled everybody and cooked etc. Uh, Forty million people died in a matter of those 18 days. And Arjuna in the beginning didn't want to participate. And so as the Mahabharat unfolds, it's like an amazing storyline. But the key to the whole thing, the most intensive spot in the Mahabharat, is when Kunti tells Karna the story. Of course, it was covered in just before they were about to he was going to go and he said, out, I won't, either one will die, either be me, or it's going to be Arjuna. So she tried to plead with him and told him the whole story that you're actually my firstborn son. And then the, the lamentation of, oh my God, you know, you would be the, the king of the earth because you're the first son. So you would be, you just have to accept that. You could just, we'll tell the Pandavas that you're going to be, you're the oldest boy and you'll be, and they'll accept that. You don't have to worry about it. No, I vowed to Duryodhana, I'm going to do the business I have to do. It'll be one of the other. Either I go or Arjuna goes. It's already been vowed. I have to do that. So it be done. So we know the story. Forgive the most. Narda reported that actually he saw a meeting that was being held in the forest. And in the meeting, Lord Brahma was talking to the demigods. And so the demigods and, the, and Brahma tried to negotiate a, an idea of how to kill and get rid of all the demons, including Kamsa. And Narda tells this to Kamsa to activate the ambient, create an animosity, increase the fire. And so, <clears throat> So according to the prediction that these agreed, that all these sages and Lord Brahma agreed, the way to do it is through Devaki. So have eight sons and ultimately Krishna will appear in the eighth son and, and take your comps to good and proper. Um, it's Keshwa Pandit's uh, appearance day, the Keshwar Pandit. There's a little story about him. Uh, Lord Chaitanya in a 24-hour kirtan phase that uh, was famous for. Keshwar, uh, he danced for 72 hours straight. And Lord Chaitanya said that Krishna is dancing in his heart. So when the big Keshwar dances, so, so does Krishna dancing in his heart, makes him dance. He was the early associate of Lord Chaitanya. 
And Navadweepi grew up and was was associate. And then he moved when, when Lord Chaitanya moved to Puri and danced and chanted. Danced every time Lord Chaitanya danced, the kids were danced. He lived near the Gambira. He established deities in Krishna in a Ketra Mejra's house was next to the Gambira. He did an incarnation of Tangavidya. Tangavidya is one of the associates of uh, Astashakis, a very well-placed personality. He trained a young boy named Gopal. Lord Chaitanya called him Guru, so his name became Gopal Guru Goswami. And I also did a research on, on uh, I can find it. I can't find it. We already went by with Shamananda Prabhu's um, his disappearance festival, but I looked it up and I, I'm kind of a fan of him. The disciple of Rasikananda. Uh, Shamananda was not a Brahmin, not Brahmin family. He's one of the three keeping their responsibility for these, all the writings of the Goswamis, Srinivasacharya, Narottam. Oh, okay, I'll talk into the microphone. He was three, one of three. Shamananda Prabhu is one of the three, keeping the writings of the Goswamis intact. So Srinivasacharya, Narottam, and and Shamananda. They had the responsibility of taking the books compiled by Jiva Goswami and the bullet card to, to, to Bengal to be copied and to be translated again into other languages. So another story along the way, they got robbed by the king of the Dakoids, this big king that had to, was told that there'd be gold coming in a cart steal the gold and they were in their trunks. So they stole the writings and the next morning they woke up and the trunks are gone. So the other boys, they went on and they're traveling and did their preaching. But the Shamananda stayed in the area to go see the king. He knew what happened by, Austin, by uh, mystic power. So he met the king and, and started preaching to the king as a point in effect. He became like a like a student. So he says, oh yes, we thought they were gold, but I can see the real gold is those writings, so we take the trunks, no problem. Um, so all three were great singers and preachers. Uh, a great mystic arrived in Vrindavan on a tiger one day to greet the Shamananda. So Shamananda was sitting on a stone brushing his teeth with a twig, you know, named twig. And he just, he moved with the stone, big stone moved, sitting on the stone to meet the tiger, and guy on the tiger. So he had power to manipulate and move obstacles. So, Keturigram, the festival that's very famous where Lord Chaitanya and the associates of Lord Chaitanya appeared in the midst of the dancing. And Janava was officiating the whole process in, installation of deities. There were six deities that were installed. Lord Chaitanya, Vallabha Kanta, Braja Ramohan, Sri Radha Raman, and Radha Kanta. All were offered Arctic and by Narottam, that was the, did the, the, the Kirtan. And Narottam's Kirtan melted the hearts of everybody that's mentioned. That when he sang, your heart melted absolutely completely and so you were like, you're just passive, you're finished. And so the dancing, the kirtan went on all day and into the night. The next morning they woke up and they installed the deities. And so then the deities were installed, that big huge prashadam distribution going on. And so then the kirtan went on and on and on. And ultimately that's when it, the Lord appeared. Lord China physically appeared with the associates and they all started dancing. Advaita, Srivas, 
uh, all of everybody was there. And so, plus other associates. And so, the dancing took place, and it was like famous in Rasigananda. Uh, eventually, melted into the Kishore Gopinath deity and Ramuna. And once he did that, he just he disappeared into the deity like Lord Chaitanya. In 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 top in uh, in Puri would Gopinath. So when he melted and went into the deity form, everybody was playing in the kirtan, the cartel and just dropped and they all died on the spot. And they all left their bodies, their samadhis are together. During that festival, Janava Mata was a famous cook. So on the third day, um, She cooked and everybody took prasad from the from the hand of Janava. And the king at that time, King Santa Dutta, he gave gold and other gifts to all the different assembly personalities and everybody went their own way. But when the copies of the writings of the Goswamis were went taken back in copy form to Vrindavan, Jiva made a, a gunta samadhi for all the writings. And those books are still available. The uh, Vaishnav Institute in Vrindavan has those copies. And I was present when the negotiation was going on. And the guy at the Radhadamadar temple, the prophet associated with the, the father of the family that runs that temple, the Radhadamadar. So he traded the, these writings, these valuable scriptures and they're on display, you can see it like pearls on a string, beautiful handwriting in, in Sanskrit and Hindi. And so he was traded for a bottle of whiskey and some rupees. And that was the payment for those beautiful handwritings and all those books that were stored in the Granta Samadhi. Oh, more about Shamananda. It was Rasikananda who, who uh, melted it, not Shamananda. Okay, when Shamananda was sweeping in, in Radhakun, no, in, uh, in, uh, in the Vrindavan, Sevakunj, he found an ankle bell. That ankle bell was, was uh, of course, Radharani, so she dropped it. The lead of Ashaka came to get the to get the bill back. So they blindfolded Shaman and took him to where Radharani was and had, and had him give the anchor bell back directly. He wanted to give it direct to whoever owned it. It was Radharani's bell. And so he touched it to his head and gave the mark. That Sampraday has got a special mark they used for T-Lock that came from that incident. So um, In terms of the the chapter direction about Krishna's birth and activities and pastimes, it's a of course it's something that we go through every Jamastami and and ultimately the idea is to glorify the Lord on the special days and take advantage of, of what we have offer offering here in, in Mayapur as well. That on all these festival occasions and the dancing and chanting increases like anything. Also, we have an opportunity to worship Krishna directly. And so recently, where Shanyatra took place in Rajput, I noticed that pouring water over the deities, there's so much power coming out of the deities, especially at that time. So if you notice that during the height of these festival occasions, you get a lot of more power, more mercy. When I was in Vrindavan doing worship to Radhisham, I could sense that on some days they were more personally present, other days they were not so strong. But some days there was so much power and personality coming from the deity form, especially Radharani. She was like a kaleidoscope every day, she looked a little different. And on different occasions, she's absolutely 
personified in that any form. And so there was no question about it. But, uh, and I'd be happy to take in, you can tell that in certain pictures of Radharani, they're a deity, and in some places they're not a deity anymore. And so uh, I had 41 years of experience serving those lordships. And ultimately I sensed that every once in a while they would appear in person and fully charge the deity form and ultimately, heavens. I mean, there's like a, that's why I could, people ask me how I could be on the altar for 41 years. That's why. Because of so much mercy and so much tension that you get when you're on the Lord service line. When you're outside looking in, you're just looking in. But when you're inside working on the altar, sorry, you're being looked at. So it's a big difference being on and out. And after all those years, I look back on it and I think, what an opportunity to have to be in Vrindavan or to be here in Mayapur. When there's so many people suffering around the world, ultimately there's, there's no Krishna consciousness in many parts of the world still. I mean, the devotees are making magnificent quantum leaps in terms of distributing pr prasadam and giving the nectar and, and preaching. It'll all, always increase unf un unfathomably because ultimately it's a prediction. In the next 10,000 years, we've got the golden years coming up. And so at that time, we can, they, the movement will progress to the point where the governments will be taken by devotees and there'll be speeches, there'll be de people on the bench in the Supreme Court wearing tilak, Katimala. The Prabhupada predicted, and it's, there was a war, a war that was going on during Prabhupada's time with the with the deep programmers, and, but Prabhupada predicted, don't worry about it because ultimately the time is coming when there'll be governments run by devotees and there'll be no more cow slaughter. The first thing Prabhupada would mention that if I had presidency of any country, especially America, I would do two things. First off, open up the grain storages and feed everybody and stop the cow slaughter. Those are the first two things. Feeding everybody, making a transition between the meat eaters and the, and the devotees, stop the meat eating. Ultimately, that's the, America is wonderful in every way except for the fact they eat the meat. So Prabhupada was really strong about trying to make this inroad to stop cow slaughter. And uh, it's happening. There were some devotees in Australia that were blowing up slaughterhouses and not a good idea. I think one devotee got blown up also. So in any case, Krishna consciousness runs along. We are here in Mayapur and ultimately the benediction of being here is something that's un unbelievable to see it happen. And I'm personally involved with the TLVP making drawings of the different pastimes on Lord Nishinga Dave. Now, I just think about it. How is it possible that you could get to be here? What happened? I mean, suddenly we're here in Mayapur, worshiping the Lord, taking advantage of the Dom. And what about all those people out there still suffering and looking, trying to find a way in the material life? It's, it's hopeless. Because ultimately, you, you're born, you're raised, and you die, and you don't know what happened. I had a cousin here recently. He came here unknowing anything about Krishna consciousness, and he, he, took, he spent a week here made great inroads into being a devotee. So there's some hope, even in a family situation. If your family is a meat-eating family, ultimately we benedict them by being a devotee and that penetrates into their hard core. So one way or another, ultimately stay a devotee, don't leave, leave the ship. I have one story, I, I had a friend in Vrindavan, he said I have to go back to London I was pleading with him, don't go back. If you can, don't make the trip. Because we get swayed back by going after money and try to maintain our family. And ultimately it means going back to the material world and get a job and be stuck in again. So he said, no, I gotta go back. He was in a position to be a sannyasin prophet 
authorized it, but he didn't take it. So he goes back to London, he gets caught with drugs. He goes to jail, in jail he hangs himself. That's you know, that devotee. So stay in Mayapur, stay in Vrindavan, stay in the Dham. Even if you're not in the Dham, ultimately Prabhupada says, wherever you are, if you're a devotee, you're in Mayapur and you're in Vrindavan. So take advantage of the situation inside or outside. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Any questions? Okay, uh, glory to Prabhupada. Prabhupada Ki Jai.